So I recently got one of these square readers to um, try to tear apart and sort of see what's involved in it. Uh, I thought it'd be interesting to take a look, you know, because there should be some level of security in this thing. Um, take a look at what's what goes into these types of devices. Um, so there's not a whole lot in the box for reference, right? There's a little um, printer, so you get some thermal paper. Uh, there's a charger, so it's USB-C, uh, and that's about it. So what we're really interested in is basically just the the reader itself. So let's get rid of everything else. Um, and if we take a look at this guy, um, so we can take maybe this off so we get a better feel for it. Um, it looks to be Android. So I did power this guy on quickly. It was already charged which is interesting because for tamper stuff, right, we would like to know that there's a uh, battery power in there. Um, so originally I was thinking maybe I could get away without, with opening it without tripping tamper. So we'll see uh, what's involved in this thing. But um, otherwise there's not a whole lot to it. Um, so I've only briefly looked at this so far. So there you go. So square terminal. Um, so you can see it looks like, you know, this looks a lot like Android, so. Um, but yeah, let's turn that off and take a look. Uh, so at the rear here, we have, there's sort of like a printer uh, paper is loaded here. Um, there's not a whole lot that you can see from that, but what I can see is that basically um, the, there's sort of some clips here. So, you know, one of the attacks on these is always like supply chain attacks. Um, so, okay, just take that off. Uh, what's interesting is can you open this up without any sort of noticeable um, effect happening on it? Uh, if you can do that, right, there's, there's some pretty cool stuff you can think about going there. You can just see, I don't know if you'll be able to see, let's uh, try to zoom in. Um, so it looks like the back of the screen, you can sort of see some um, terminals here uh, visible, but I think that's probably just going to the screen. Um, besides that, not a whole lot. So it's pretty obvious that the bottom uh, plate looks to be connected. Um, so what I'm going to try doing is you can see this plate through here. So if we just push, because I, you know, I want to avoid pry marks on it, and there's always nicer ways to do this, but that actually worked pretty well. So it just sort of popped a little bit open. Um, and you can see some of these plastic snaps. So let's do the same thing on the other side. I'm just going to push in, try to unclip it from the inside here. Okay. That also worked. Um, so, you know, I'm not too worried about actually not leaving a mark, um, but you can see it seems plausible to open it. So, just gonna kind of pry. There we go. So it just kind of pops up like this. Um, so you can see the whole thing. Uh, there's a bit of sort of tape, double-sided tape here. Um, and on the back of the enclosure, what's there? Not a whole lot. Um, right, just plastic it looks like. So again, we're kind of curious if there's any tamper stuff in this, this thing. Um, here's the back. So you can see where the paper would be. Um, something here which I'm not sure what is originally I'm gonna assume an antenna but like there's a little uh, this QR code right which could just be part of manufacturing or something there's this T2 bot and then this QR code on it um, but it looks like some sort of little cable going there so that could be an RF cable uh, but around the side here there's a bunch of screws so just give me a second to undo these screws and we'll get back to it Um, actually, and so I did notice one little thing here in my haste to pop that back off. I did make a, a noticeable mark, 
um, which is if you can see, it looks like the, and it might be a little hard to see, it looks like this, the jack, so I think there's like a uh, audio jack, and I think that got damaged. Um, so, right, that was going through this hole here, oops, right there, and I think it just pulled it off, so maybe don't be quite as crazy about it as I was, but you get the idea, so... All right, so now what we have is the display. Should be somehow attached to this guy. It seems to just kind of pop off. But we should keep an eye out for the display cable, which, okay, there we go. Over here. What's going on here? So we've got the display cable in there. Um, and just kind of, there we go. Just kind of will fall apart here. Um, yeah. So what do we got on this side? Not a whole lot. So there's a big uh, coil here. So you can sort of probably just see in the, the light um, using like the, the cool matte black PCB. So there's a coil here for the NFC. Um, on the side, there's another one of these things here. Um, and so it says T2 right. The other one says bottom. And it also has a QR code. Is that the same? Right, what was it before? So... Okay, so it's slightly different. So it's not the same code on it. So I was just wondering if they're coded to the device or something. Um, so I'll we'll have to figure out what those are. If they're, you know, I'm always looking for some sort of tamper sensor. Um, nothing obvious here, um, tamper-wise, but there there may be stuff I've tripped already. Um, here's the, the reader. So for the slide card, you can see, and that just goes down to here, it looks like. No, sorry to the to here. Um, there's a bit of a ribbon cable, and we've got to get this display off so that we can look at stuff a little easier. Um, right now, the display connectors connect uh, going between the two. So all I'm gonna do is it looks like this is just some tape here. Let's just hope. Okay, what did they do? Yeah, so it looks like they just taped over the display connector. Um, and these guys, how do they go? So either, looks like maybe it's a rear fold up. Okay. So these two just fold up here. I think this is the same. Yep, yeah, okay. This cable pull. Pull. Cool. Um, so the display side, this j looks just to be like a display and touch screen uh, connection, something like that. So nothing too interesting there. Um, here's the actual, the main unit, so we can keep going there. Um, again, you know, at this point in time, not too much to say. A bunch of test points that will probably be worth uh, taking a look at later. Um, and any devices in here we can see. Again, always curious if there's some security devices or similar. Um, but nothing immediately obvious. So let's just keep going. So we'll have to get some Torx um, drivers out of this in a moment. So we got another few connections. So this this connection, interestingly, um, it was the uh, reader. So there you can see this is the the credit card swipe reader. I think it looks like is going there. 
Um, so what's kind of curious about these, actually, one of the things I wanted to, to take a look for is um, in the old style credit card readers, they actually, some places would weigh them at night uh, because what you had is people actually modified them like either during delivery or broken afterwards and modified the readers um, to do stuff like record the, the credit card numbers, you know, especially before a chip and pin uh, and just transmit it somewhere. Um, so it is kind of interesting to see, you know, what, how easy would it for an attacker be to modify stuff, um, which obviously they'll they'll try to have anti-tampering stuff to avoid um, making it pretty easy to modify this. So be kind of curious to see what all is involved in these things. But let's keep going here. All right, uh, had to go get a, a different screwdriver, fit all this stuff. So let's keep going. What's going on here? So interestingly, this is actually a super thin, so I think this just is st stuck on. Ah, yeah, okay. That should be step one. Um, this just pops off. Oh, cool, okay, yeah, so there's way more behind here. Um, and again, they love taping down the connectors, which I mean, hey, not a bad thing. So what type of connector are you? This looks to be... something different slightly. Let me take a closer look. Okay, no, it's kind of a rear flip up one as well, so... Um, the worst is if you guess wrong and you force it up, a lot of these break pretty easily, so, um, so I'm a little careful. So there's the uh, the antenna. Um, what else is on this? So now we got a whole other board available. There's some fancy I see with a QR code embedded on top of it. Um, and what else do we got here? Looks like a bunch of power stuff. Let's see what's on. Yeah, I'm going to guess, I mean, you see the big inductor, obviously, and these might be uh, some sort of switch, right? So they've built a little uh, regulator, switching regulator, um, which, oh yeah, see here you go, look at these two fat connections. So this is probably actually the battery direct, so that makes sense. And this might be like part of the motor driver or something like that. Um, okay. So that would actually be good, you know, it's always nice if you can kill the battery off. So I'm going to just remove this. Boom, okay. So let's get this out of the way. Oops, it's pretty fancy. They have a little, uh, like engraving on it or something. Seems excessively fancy, but you know, whatever. All right, so I think, th I'm gonna assume that's the battery, huh? It's like a very th stiff one, and then we can just unplug whatever this other ones are. Um, and this guy here. Boom. And this looks like kind of a fat one, so I'm wondering if this is the uh, printer or something like that. Ah, dropping screws here. Okay, so. Oh, there's more in the back. Ah, cool, okay. Maybe there's more to this than I thought. So, what do we got here? Um, STM32L. 072. So this is a Cortex M0. This is a pretty small guy here um, in terms of like memory and stuff, right? So this is obviously just, I mean, this could be like power management. Um, it's pretty low power, I think, these ones. So that could be a reason for it. And it would make sense based on the board. This looks like TPS. Uh, I'm going to guess TPS65986. 
Let's just do a quick Google. Normally stuff in that series is like a uh, power management. So I'm going to guess. Let's get that part number in. TPS. Six, five, nine, eight, six. Um, oh yeah, there you go. So type C power delivery. So that makes sense, right? This is gonna be your, oh, discontinued. <laughs> oh no. Well, I'm sorry guys. Nine and, oh, okay, may, maybe there's a eight, seven. Are they really using eight, six? Yeah, that looks like it now. Well, that sucks for them. End of life. Okay. Uh, whatever. So STM 32L, Cortex M0. Uh, what else is on this guy? Can't really see a bunch of this. This little really shiny one. This is like a chip scale package probably here. Um, so these are tiny, tiny ones. So it'll be hard to figure out what that is. Um, but, you know, I don't... What the heck is this? So I think this, I don't actually... Uh, I mentioned there's this one with this QR code here. This might just be a sticker. Is that a chip? No. So that's just a label. Okay. Oh, there we go. Cool. So that's kind of all we've got on that guy. So let's see what else we can do. Um, so this, I'm going to take a guess that this is the main board here. I mean, if you kind of look at how much else is involved in this. Um, right, that sort of makes sense because you got the printer stuff. Um, so hopefully we're gonna get to the majority of this pretty quick. Um, okay, so let's keep going here. There's a screw here. I don't know if I'll bother putting it back together. We'll see. Another screw here, a little one. Another screw here, a little one. And what's this thing here? There's some sort of... Some sort of plastic sheath on um, whatever this is. So which might have to do with the printer. Kind of looks like in that area. Fortunately, there's a screw hidden. I don't know if you can see these screw heads way under here. So we'll have to get this. Whatever this plastic thing is has to come off. So let's keep going. More screws on the side. Ah, okay. I think this is going to be good now. One more here. Boom. Oh, yeah, look at that. Okay, cool. So, so I completely lied to you. When I looked in the back, um, this is the, the connector. So from the rear, you can see right here this connector. So this is categorically not the display. Um, like I tried to claim. So this must be, okay, so that this is the actual, I guess, receipt printer uh, or something like that. Okay, anyway, let's keep going. So now this thing's gonna come out. Ah, okay, so here's the battery. That's what this was. Um, so there's just a little cover in the battery. Okay, so much less high tech than I thought. So yeah, so this, this is the this is the printer then, um, and then this is the battery. Boom. Okay, we're making progress. Um, what we can see is there's another board underneath. So I was wrong. That's not the end of them. Um, there's going to be there's a lot of stuff packed into this. I mean, I guess it is like an Android phone or something. So 
you shouldn't be too surprised. And what we need is uh, some sort of Torx. Okay, there we go. I was also lazy, so I mean, if you really want to, you could look at like the FCC filings for this, um, which I didn't actually do that yet. This feels like this might actually come together. So before I finish taking it apart, it's kind of like, so before I even took it apart, it's wiggling. So I get the feeling that, let's see what all this is. I don't actually have to take the Torx there yet. So there's a little connector here that I, what else is holding this in? Okay, ah yeah, so that's gonna come. Oh, these are um, blind, so there's some connectors here and here. Okay, ah, uh, yeah. So this is your credit card reader module, actually, which is sort of interesting. Um, so let's take a look. So these little Torx ones were actually for the credit card reader, like this is the smart card reader. Um, right, so this is where the credit card would be inserted. And, oh wow, okay, so a lot of stuff is, oh cool, okay, now we're getting into the fun stuff. So I'm gonna make a bunch of wild guesses here. Um, this, I believe, is the security boundary. Right, so what you can see, so this just got a thousand times more interesting. Um, what you can see, right, is that there's actually a pattern in this um, this smart card cover here, right? And it's going to these pins. Um, so presumably, you know, the idea here is the pattern goes in some way that is difficult is the idea to to bypass and they're using these zebra modules here so it's it's not even like sp specific pins um so what these are are these are basically it's a bunch of like uh things so L lcds would use these previously um there's sort of conductive strips in here i don't know if i can get it out yeah there you go um right so you can see it's making those two contacts there actually basically get pushed to the top um, so that's what they're using so so you can see for example that one has two contacts but some will have more this one has two well, maybe not I mean based on the uh, the top I thought there'd be more two Oops. there you go um, but yeah so you can see that's so there's actually a seal over that's pretty cool um, so yeah, so they're trying to have like a seal over it. So what else do we have going on here? Um, okay, so you have a micro. This is just like a generic micro, I believe, MK21. Let's pop this in. MK21FX512. V12. Um, okay. This should be a. Let's see. It doesn't actually come up on NXP's website, which is funny. Ah, uh, there we go. Kind of this. Yeah, there you go. Full speed USB. Um, anti-tamper microcontroller, right? What does that mean? Probably it's, this is actually implementing the, um, let's take a look. I'm going to guess this is actually implementing the, the stuff that's going on, um, this guy here. So I suspect, you know, the signal that's sent around this uh, is actually implemented in the microcontroller and that's how it's doing some of the anti-tamper, um. I mean, it could be, it could come from there could be a secure element on this. I'm not really sure yet. Um, so if we look at tamper, tamper detect. Uh, this is just the 
short data sheet. Let's see. Mm. This is all data sheets. Reference manual. So yeah, I don't know when this this uh, square device was introduced, but I guess it's not the newest thing then. I had just seen one recently, so picked it up. Tamper detect. Okay, there we go. So, tamper detect and secure storage. Um, huh. All right, this is it. So, I guess basically this is supposed to kill itself um, when it detects the tamper, which for this to work, so the other thing we're hopefully going to find on this module is some power backup, because obviously this tamper detect is active um, only when you have power to it, right? So depending how things are implemented, um, they're Man, maybe these huge capacitors on the back here. Uh, that looks like part of a switching regulator. Not part of a super cap or something. But yeah, I mean, what's interesting is this is the, um, you know, when I open the, the top, this is what you see. So this is kind of the, the most accessible portion. Um of the board, you have a little RF connector there. What was there? Antenna? Okay. What's going on on the rest of this? So, there's a few small parts that will be difficult to read. You'll have to get a microscope or something, I think. Let's try to get the light. Yeah, um, which this is kind of cool. There's like a square chip. I don't know what the heck this is doing. So they obviously have decided to either mark their own device. I mean, this could just be a marked device. Who knows? Um, NXP device TXD9301. Um, so these sort of, I don't know. You can be, you, you start to realize uh, TXD9301. Yeah, nothing. Uh, some of these might be kind of customer specific mark devices, which is very common if it's any sort of security device. Right, so they purposely have part numbers that you can't just Google to figure out what they are. Um, so that may also be some sort of security device. There's our thing as mentioned. What's this? Circ, what are you? the same thing. One C A zero three seven. Ah, there we go. So touch. Huh. So according to this is just touch sensor. Um so I don't know if this is a part of some security stuff or this is just um, literally the, the touchpad has been done through here. Uh, I'm not really sure. You'd have to pin out where all this goes. You know, it seems a bit funny to, to find it inside this security area. And finally, what do we have? This looks like maybe a ST something or other. F051K86. Let's try that one. And did I get the part number wrong? This also could be, I don't know, you know, F051, 51K86. So according to this, it's just a, yeah, sure, um, another little micro. Huh, 
Okay, interesting. So I don't know what they're using um, all the different micros and stuff for, but you can see there's a ton of stuff packed onto this board. Right, at least two micros, a bunch of other stuff, whatever their device is doing. Um, at least one, this micro is kind of secure. Um, potentially, you know, I'm wondering if they do have one of these is an actual secure element or similar. Which wouldn't surprise me. But there you go. So that's, I think this is actually the, the most interesting aspect of it. Um, but let's take a look at the rest of the stuff too. Because we didn't even get into the Android half of this, right? So underneath this is all the Android stuff. Um, so it looks like there's some shields here. So let's pop this out. See what's going on here. So we've got more of this tape. They love this tape. Squares. I'm gonna invest in this tape manufacturer or something. I don't know. Um, okay, so this is the button. So this, interestingly, what is that? That's something that went to the um, the other board. If you remember, I had unplugged that one. So there's a few more of these. Um, but let's pull some of this stuff off so we don't break it. So power button here. Um, whatever this guy is here, some holder, some more screws here. Um, we can also see, so a while back I had claimed that you know what are those things that look like maybe antennas so now I'm more confident yes it was antennas uh, because you can see they're going to this these RF connectors um, also you know if they were some sort of anti-tamper thing I would assume they go to the uh, there we go uh, you'd assume they go to the kind of security board not this so what I'm assuming here is this is sort of like a more general purpose board um, you know who knows how it's really implemented but just with the effort put into the other one I think it's fair to assume it ah, this one again look at that they got nice marked things so you can't screw up I guess they all go they all face the arrows face one way right so that faces up it's kind of cool um, let's pop a few more things off here. It's mini MCX. Should probably use a UFL, actually not mini MCX. Okay, there we go. Um, what else is on this? So, whatever these guys are here. Still connected, but I think. Oh, right, and this connector here is presumably similar to the other ones where it flips at the back. We'll find out if I break it. No, okay, we're good. And let's pop it up. So Okay, cool. Um, so you can see there's some thermal pad here. So obviously this is kind of interesting. They're doing cooling to the case. Um, the rest of it, so these things that I questioned, what were they, right? We've got one going down here. Um, looks like... Like maybe there's some like grills in there or something. So I don't know if this is actually speakers or stuff are are being done with this. Um, and same, you know, from the front. So that could be the case. Just pop this up while we're here. Let's take a look at what's under 
through all this crap. Oh, come on. that cloth tape off okay so this doesn't even go under there so this is actually wants to the whole um, ah, okay let's see so I might be wrong there's a good chance I'm wrong because I see what looks like maybe a little battery um, so it's possible there is you know like an RTC or something there um, so this guy is definitely a speaker. So one's a speaker. Okay. Um, what is this one, though? These two. Aha. Nope, so I was wrong. So there's two batteries under here. So one for each board. Um, so then you have the backup batteries that I've now removed. Um, so what's going to be interesting is did I just destroy all of the keys uh, from this, right? So if this is implemented reasonably well um, I probably just broke it irreplaceably right so um, the keys hopefully were stored sorry something fell over here I had to grab um, the keys were hopefully stored using these batteries to, to back it up um, often people don't like doing this because it you know it's obviously impossible to repair uh, once the keys are lost so you sort of see some some different ways things get done, but huh, this will be interesting. So we'll see. We'll we'll find out because I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try putting it back together enough to boot. Um, I'm not gonna bother put all the screws in, but anyway, let's just see if we can get the um, shields off this guy. And before I do that. want to separate because there's two cases here so oh. this stuff's kind of nasty okay well let's just try this shield first just don't have a very good screwdriver but if I break it I break it So it's actually separating the uh, SMD. It looks like it, the shield will just pop off, but isn't actually doing a good job of that. There we go. So let's just see if this pops up now without damaging the rest of it. Okay, there we go. Oh shit. Well, started to pull the shield from the board. So this is probably the, there's gonna be a few things, right? Um, this looks like the RF side. So if we zoom in, uh, you can see A, I mean the giveaway is right. Obviously the antennas are here. Um, and you can see it, started to pull it from the board. Um, but yeah, you can see the RF uh, antennas are here, but and these traces sort of look very rf -y. The nice sort of smooth traces. Um, you see, like this part here, is some sort of uh, RF coupler, most likely. So often these parts are used to convert uh, types of RF signals, so like impedance matching or balanced unbalanced. It's called. So it frequently looks just like that. Um, so that was probably the least interesting one. I think this other one is one big shield. So let's just pop that guy up. Do a similar deal. So to just make sure it's actually uh, movable. Where's the whole thing soldered down? Which is oh no, okay, we're good. Yeah, it's just annoying if they like actually solder down the whole shield and then you can't 
can't actually remove anything. That's no fun. Great. We want to be able to pop it open. Okay. There we go. Should have grabbed a sharper screwdriver here, but anyway, get the idea. Just go around. Cool. Um, so there we go. So this is like their standard Android crap now. Um, so we're going to have, let's see, what are they using? Qualcomm. There you go. Um, so that's your main sock. Let's see if you can get a part number off that. Qualcomm sock. It's faint, but you can see there. Um, and the other one's normally your memory. So you have a Qualcomm sock and probably memory. Um, up here, what do we have? This looks like power management. Just all the inductors kicking around it. Yeah, Qualcomm as well. Um, but that's kind of power management. So what's in here? I don't know. Um, we can look later. But there's a lot of test points and stuff, right? So there could be some interesting stuff to probe at. Um, obviously, like, interesting to see if you get a serial console. But there you go. And, you know, as you expect... Yeah, okay. So the, the here's the Qualcomm sock here. And right on the other side, these capacitors. A, all the decoupling capacitors. And this is what's pressed into the, uh, the case. Right, so that's your kind of heat dissipation system. So there you go. That's uh, everything that's in, you know, one of these uh, square readers. So move all this stuff together. Um, the interesting part to me is really this main module, right? Because this is what's doing or appears to be doing the security stuff. So I'm going to try quickly putting it back together and powering on, see what happens. Um, I expect, right, it's not super happy because... I just killed all the um, the memory and these the batteries and stuff here, but yeah, whatever. Let's see what happens. So, I mean, also, so the the other question is, of course, it might be that I haven't registered this thing yet or anything. Um, so, let's see how this goes. I should look. Um, the 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 real question is, it's there might not be any secrets in it until. Right, they get registered or something like that. So it could be the case that it actually will still work. If you just kill it if you take it apart, um, you know, from from an attacker. So I'm not going to bother putting these shields back on. I'm just gonna see if it boots because I'll probably want to take them off again later. So why make it harder? Zoom in a little here. Okay. Um, so, this one under here, somehow. Oh, no. The question is can I not break it just from. Crappy reassembly practices. Okay. So how bad is that? That's pretty good. Just need this one above. Here. Come on. There we go. So let's just check. We got. I'm not gonna put the battery back yet. Just because I don't wanna. Find out I'm shorting something out. Okay. I think that seems pretty good. Whatever this is here, the side. It's really. Screws in enough to keep it 
happy. I wonder if this was, eh, whatever. Seems like it goes this way. It's always a bit worrying when you're kind of cranking it down, but so be it. Okay, so now that's got its backup batteries, at least on this one. Okay, um, so we now need the second board and we'll put its anti-tamper back so all four of these things are there right so put that and we'll put where are they so there's some fancier there there Two ones. So what'll be kind of cool is if you try to boot it and it gives you some sort of tamper error. Really curious what this thing will think of what I've done to it. I'm missing one more. Yeah, I should. The thing is I want to make sure it's making pretty good contact so I need to find that one last where'd that screw go stand up here okay well whatever I can't seem to find the uh there's one more of those fancy torque screws, but we'll just assume three is good enough. Um, so, how'd this fit? Let's see. Really, I'm just trying to get enough stuff back that we can do a little boot test. Okay, so that seems good. Let's put one, two screws in here to hold it down. And I think this will actually push the smart card, the missing screw, a little bit. That'll be helpful, so that's good. stuff is plugged back in boom boom and this guy so this is your smart card reader uh, what else so we got this battery thing. Um, if you remember, there was like an extra battery. I think I kind of rewrited this incorrectly. Um, but yeah, so we'll put that back. So now this thing definitely has its battery backup back online. Um, we need the battery itself. I probably should put the... Battery goes in there. Um, there's this printer dealio here. Go somewhere there. Okay, and this guy. So if we put that in there, so all it's missing after is the screen. Try to not short my my battery. It's a big one. Recommend not shorting it. Be my only tip. Okay, there we go. Yep, 
Okay. One and two. So I think we're going to need a screw. I'm trying to avoid screws, but yeah, there's going to be a limit to how much you can avoid them before this thing's going to fall apart as I'm trying to do it. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So see, I forgot. Yeah, I think we'll be good. And the battery. Okay, nothing caught fire. That's good. Um, so finally, we have the need this guy so we can actually see what's going on. And we'll just kind of try to sneak it in. I. You know, just trying to avoid getting too much, too much hassle, but I think we'll need that at least. Okay, one and two. Okay, so there is our horribly mangled square, oh god, terminal. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to power it on, see what happens. I'm just going to press the button. Oh, okay, the little logo came up. Oh god, okay, that's just the printer, it does a reset test or something. So I never initialized this before, um, you know, I didn't know what the, the most interesting way to do was it to initialize it and then, yeah, we're in Canada. Um, I never agreed to any term of use, so it's fine. Um, we have no Ethernet, so we'll do Wi-Fi here and I'm just going to switch this. going um we are yeah whatever atlantic standard time so halifax in one more hour compared to wow well, okay um so i'm not sure to be honest um what i'm gonna have to do is actually make an account and see if the terminal is accepting this thing. So yeah, let me do that and come back here. All right, so I had to make an account to test the rest of this. And what I did is I just tried to sign into my account and we can see what happens on the device when you do that. Um, it does detect it, so this is good, um, you know, Maybe, and I'm, you know, if you if you want to do a more intense test, maybe don't pull all these batteries off. Um, the better question is, if you just remove the case, what happens? Um, I have a feeling that, you know, uh, what was happening is that by pulling these batteries and stuff, that might have been too far. Um, but it does detect it, right? So it, it doesn't do it right away. But as soon as I even tried to sign in. Um, so I had wondered if maybe it was the case of like when you try to use the payment system, it's going to complain or something like that. Um, so it, cause you, you had that subsystem that had all the anti tamper stuff on it. Um, so maybe, you know, maybe that was, or originally that's what I thought, but it seems like even earlier than that, it is checking. So that's good, right? This is what I, I want to see in this type of stuff is that if you're using it, right, it shouldn't be super easy to, to bypass this crap. So, um, and like if you pull the battery off during operation, yeah, no difference here.
But there you go. So there's kind of a little quick teardown of um, the Square terminal. And you can see what's involved in it. It's basically like an Android-based system. Um, you have a touch screen. You have, you know, LCD, all the sort of stuff you expect here. Um, there's smart card reader in the bottom. There's a little NFC. Uh, that's what I forgot to attach was the antenna. Um, little NFC antenna and stuff like that. So um, it seems like pretty pretty reasonable system. It's sort of interesting. There's a lot more you can investigate. Um, to do more testing would probably need a new one because I suspect some interesting stuff has been wiped by me taking the battery out. Um, so a better question, you know, if someone wants to look further is if you just remove the, the cover, because like I can just kind of remove this stuff without, um, obviously without taking the battery off, but you can do this and I don't know what tamper is there or not. It's not clear, um, from just looking at it, you know, what level of tamper exists. Um, in just opening the, the case, but maybe there's something that there's an attacker you can probe between the test points, between the uh, the touch screen or things like that. But don't really know uh, without a little more investigation um, into this guy, but thought I'd share with you this kind of quick teardown and test of it.